Hello everybody, get ready to do lesson 6.1, Law of Science for Pre-Calculus Math Today, Part 1. Uh, let's get to it right now. And we got 8.0 of, of notebook taking, so have a notebook guide or get your notebook out. And then we got 46.0 of classwork to do uh, for 6.1, Law of Science. And teachers and students, we start out with our bell work. Um, and for 58, use given values to find, if possible, the values of the remaining four trigonometric functions of theta. So you got two here, find the other four. And then for number 62, write the product as a sum or a difference. So you have a product here. Write this as a sum or difference. Uh, give your students about five minutes, teachers. And this, uh, they'll need this area too to finish the second bell work problem here. Like I say, give your students five, maybe six minutes. Okay, back to our solutions for today's bell work. Uh, find, if possible, the values of the remaining four trigonometric functions of theta. So we know tan theta is 2 over 9. And we know cosecant theta equals the negative of square root 85 over 2. So knowing these val these exact values here, we can find our other four values here. Cotan theta would equal 9 over 2. That one's easy. And then sine theta would be the negative of uh, 2 over square root 85. When you rationalize your denominator, you get the negative of 2 times radical 85 over 85. And then cosine would be cotan theta minus sine theta. So we have negative 9 over 2 uh, times this multiplied here. Negative 9 over 2 multiplying by uh, negative 2 over radical 85. And when you rationalize your denominator, you come out with a negative of 9 times uh, radical 85 over 85. And then secant theta would be the negative of uh, uh, 85, radical 85 over 9 for secant theta. <clears throat> okay, moving right along here. Down here for 62, write the product as a sum or difference. So this here will become uh, 5 over 2, multiplying by, we're going to use a half angle formula here, the 1 half of cosine 3 pi over 4 minus 5 pi over 6 minus cosine of 3 pi over 4 plus uh, 5 pi over 6. And then to finish that off, to simplify that further, when we do our multiplication out front, we have 5 over 4 multiplying times cosine of negative pi over 12 minus cosine of 19 pi over 12. And then when we finish this out, uh, we have the cosine of pi over 12 minus cosine of 19 pi over 12 all times 5 over 4. The cosine of negative pi over 12 will give you the same answer as positive of cosine pi over 12. And this will be your most simplified expression of that. Okay, to our lesson today, your notebook students have your notebook ready here. And we're going into the introduction to chapter six. In chapter four, you looked at techniques for solving right triangles. In this section and the next, you'll solve oblique triangles, triangles that have no right triangles, no right angles. As standard notation, the angles of a triangle are labeled A, B, and C. And their opposite, opposite sides are labeled A, B, and C as shown. So angles are capitals, and then your sides are, are lowercase, is what that amounts to, like that. Page 2 goes in your notebook as well. To solve an oblique triangle, you need to know the measure of at least one side and the measures of any two other parts of the triangle. So two sides, two angles, 
or one angle and one side. This breaks down into following four cases. One, two angles in any side is angle, angle, side, or angle, side, angle. I mean, that would work for finding, for solving a triangle. And then two, two sides in an angle opposite one of them. So side, side, angle. And then three, three sides, side, side, side. And then number four, two sides and their included angle will be side, angle, side. And then the first two cases can be solved. These two cases up here can be solved using law of sines. Whereas the last two cases can be solved using law of cosine. Page three goes in your notebook. Law of sines, here it is. If ABC is a triangle with sides AB and C, then uh, A over sine A equals B over sine B equals C over sine C. And then oblique triangles here, A is acute, and then A would be obtuse. So even with these acute, where A is acute or A is obtuse, you can still solve these triangles by using your law of sines. Page four goes in your notebook. The law of sines can also be written in reciprocal form. So sine A, uh, sine angle A over A equals sine angle B over B equals sine angle C over C can be done that way as well. Let's go into our first example here. Given two angles on one side, angle, angle, side, for the triangle C equals 102.3. Here's your 102.3, and then B equals 28.7. And then the length of B would be uh, 27.4 here. So we got a, um, we got angle, angle, side here is what we have, so we need, we need to solve that, and then we need uh, lengths here and lengths there. So the third angle of the triangle is A equals 180 minus B minus C, and well, we have this angle, we have this angle, so we can just subtract here, 180 minus 28.7 minus 102.3, what does that equal? That equals 49 degrees, so angle A here, would be 49 degrees. By the law of sines, you have 49 degrees for angle A. Now using our law of sines further, we, we, have, we have three angles here. We still need to find C here. We don't have C yet. And we don't have A yet, do we? So find the remaining angle on sides. Well, okay, let's so we have this, we have this, we have this. So using B, we, we do have this side here. Using B equals 27.4. A, we're going to solve for A now. A would equal B over sine B times sine A equals, and we plug that in because we, we've moved this over to here, uh, B equals sine B to solve for A. Uh, we're going to go B over sine B times sine A, and then we plug in what we know. And we have 27.4 over sine 28.7, sine 49 degrees, and we get 43.06 for A here. So we know the length of that. And for C, we need to solve for C. We can use uh, B over sine B sine C because we know both of these. So we can plug in our values for that. And we're still solving for C here. We, we have our angle C, we know that, sine 102.3. And then when we crank this through, we get 55.75 feet for C. Let's go into our first guided practice here. <clears throat> Use the law of sines to solve the triangle we have our triangle here, and then we're going to use the same solve signs down here too. For so for number nine, we, we have an angle, we have an angle, and we have one side here. So we need B and we need A, and then we need angle A. 
So to solve for that given, we have this given. So for A here, we're going to solve for A. We just subtract the other two angles. We get 40 degrees. And now for the length of A, we need A equals C over sine C. We have that multiplied all by sine A. So we plug in our values. We have 20 multiplying by sine 125. Um, multiplying again by sine 40 degrees, and we come up <coughs> to 15.69 centimeters for A, and then we do the same thing for B, <coughs> and we're going to use C over sine C, multiply times sine B. <coughs> we plug in what we know, and then we crank it out to 6.32 centimeters for B here, okay? all using law of signs. Then we do the same thing down here. I guess I'll do it for you today. Students, here is your <clears throat> basic solutions for this triangle here. Teachers, you can pause your video for your students. Your students should be able to do this after giving them about five minutes to do it. <clears throat> but I'm going to carry on here. <clears throat> We're going to continue here on slide number nine. And we got an example to give two angles and one side, given two angles and one side, which is an angle side angle situation. A pole tilts toward the sun. Here's your pole here. <clears throat> At an angle of eight degrees. So we got eight degrees here from vertical. Here's your eight degrees here from vertical. And it cast a 22 foot shadow. So our shadow is right here, 22 foot. The angle of elevation from the tip of the shadow to the top of the pole is 43 degrees. This is your 43 degree angle for that. How tall is the pole? So here is our problem. How in the world do we find that out? <clears throat> so A equals 43 degrees. We know that much. And B equals 90 plus 8 degrees. So it's a 98 degree angle here. This is 98 degrees. So the third angle is 180 minus A minus B. And that comes out to 98 degrees. So our third angle here, uh, well, 180 minus 43 and 98, what's that? So it would be 39 degrees. So this angle up here is 39 degrees. So we figured that much out. So now we can use our law of sines, correct? By law of sines, you have A over sine A equals C over sine C. Because C equals 22 feet, the length of the pole is A equals C over sine C sine A. And then we just plug in our values here. And we have all this. We do our plug-in. We do our uh, calculations. We get 23.84 for A here, for that situation. Okay, going into our guided practice here, page 11 on your class worksheet. Uh, we have a word problem here, and they call it a physics problem. Well, we'll see. A flagpole at a right angle to the horizontal <clears throat> is located on a slope that makes an angle of 14 degrees with the horizontal. The flagpole consists of a 16 meter shadow. This is your diagram here. I've closed these out here because uh, I want you to fill these in from the word problem if you can. So try that. Flagpole casts a 16 meter shadow up the slope. Up the slope. And when the angle of elevation from the tip of the shadow to the sun is 20 degrees. So we have a bunch of conditions here to write down. So A, draw a triangle that represents a problem. Show the known quantities on the triangle and use a variable to indicate the height of the flagpole. So I have an angle here, CAB, which we'll call CAB is 70 degrees that we've gotten here from elimination. <clears throat> And then angle B equals 20 plus 14 equals 34 degrees. So um, <clears throat> that is our, our triangle here. We've got 20 degrees here. 
is the angle of elevation. So this is our uh, line here is used to develop our 20 degrees here for our angle of elevation. Then here is our height here, h. And then we have a 14 degree angle down here from another parallel line here to this line, we have a 14 degree angle of elevation here. And then this is a, our 70 degree angle here, angle CAB. And then this is our 34 degree angle here, which is derived from um, angle B, angle B equals 20 plus 14 here. So we have a 14 degree uh, angle here. That is a, a 20 plus 14 here. So that gives us our 34 degrees here. We have a 34 degree angle here from this angle to this angle. So 34 and 14 would be a 48 degree angle here. <clears throat> so this triangle represents a problem. We, a flat coil at a right angle to the horizontal. So this would be a right angle here to a horizontal here. Uh, it's located on a slope that makes an angle of 14 degrees with the horizontal. So our slope here is like this. Uh, the flat pole casts a 16 meter shadow. So you got a sun uh, like coming this way and it, it creates a shadow that's 16 meters long here from our sunlight up the slope. When the angle of elevation from the tip of the shadow to the sun is 20 degrees. So that is comprised here. So this is a fairly complicated uh, issue here. I'm not so, so sure if they do a fair job here of presenting it. So I decided to present it in the diagram here. <clears throat> So, show the known quantities on a triangle and use the variable to indicate the height. So, if we need to find h here, knowing what we got going on there. <clears throat> so, the right equation involving the unknown quantity, we're going to use our law of sines here. We have a triangle. We have this angle, we have this angle, so you should be able to find that angle. And then just use your law of sines to figure out what h is, is really what it amounts to. Okay, so into our notebook. The ambiguous case, side side angle. This goes in your notebook, students. In examples one and two, you saw that two angles on one side determine a unique triangle. However, if two sides and one opposite angle are given, then three possible situations can occur. One, no such triangle exists. Two, one such triangle exists. Or three, two distinct triangles can satisfy the condition. So we have uh, uh, three different possibilities here with an ambiguous case. Classwork, page 13. This should be on your classwork sheet, students. The ambiguous case, side side angle. Consider a triangle which you are given A, B, and side A, B, and angle A. Notice that h equals b sine a. In most of our triangles in nomenclature, we can find that h equals b sine a. So sketch, here's a sketch here for h. <clears throat> a would be acute in this situation here. And then a the necessary condition would be a would have to be less than h. So <clears throat> a here would have to be less than h for this to be an acute angle. <clears throat> then possible triangles are none. In this situation here, if a is less than h, you're not going to have a triangle here with a as an acute angle. <clears throat> now here again, a will be, this will be an acute angle, h and a. a is acute again, but a would equal h. So now when a equals h, you have one triangle. And then in another situation there, A again is acute. But what's the relation here between A and H? 
in this situation, A is greater than or equal to B in this situation. A is greater than or equal to B. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> so we have one triangle here with a situation like that. <clears throat> okay, so moving into our classwork sheet, page 14. This should be in your classwork uh, packet, students. The ambiguous case for side-side angle. Consider a triangle in which we are given A, B, and angle A. Notice that H equals B sine A. <clears throat> so the sketch of that, so here's the situation here <clears throat> where we have angle A, we got side B, side A, we got our height, and then we have another side A over here. So a would be acute. The important thing here is A is acute. <clears throat> and then a necessary condition here would be H would be less than A is less than B. So H would be less than A. It's less than A and then it's less than B. So A has got to be less than the length of B as well. And then possible triangles. So in this situation you got two possible triangles. you got this triangle here and then you got this triangle over here. <clears throat> for A or C. But this will be a triangle and then you move this over here. So you would have this triangle and then this triangle like that. So that would be your two triangles for this situation. <clears throat> and then over here you have uh, B and then A is less than obviously B. <clears throat> A would be obtuse then A is less than or equal to B, A would be less than or equal to B, and in that situation we have no triangle. And then in this situation here, we have angle A, and then you have B and A. A again will be uh, uh, obtuse here in this situation. This is obtuse. Let's say A is acute. A would be obtuse here. Over here A is acute, but these two are obtuse. <coughs> I mean, in this situation, A would be greater than B, so the length of A would be greater than B, and then you would have one triangle, and then in this situation here. So let's look at an example here. <clears throat> example three, single solution case, uh, side side angle. So for this triangle here, we have B and we have A. We don't know C. A is acute, 42 degrees. 22, B is 12, A is 42. So find the remaining side and angle. So for this situation, by the law of sines, you have sine B over B equals sine A over A. So we can use the reciprocal form to help us solve this triangle. To solve this triangle using the reciprocal form, <clears throat> we have sine B equals B times sine A over A. Multiply each side by B, and then we end up with sine B over here now, and then it equals B times sine A over A. And then we plug in what we have. We get sine B uh, multiply equals sorry, 12 times sine 42 over 22. Substitute so for A, A, and B. Then when we plug in, we crank it out, and we get 21.41 degrees for B in this situation here. B is acute, so this is our angle down here. B would be acute. Now you can determine that C, angle C, would equal 116.59. So this is a 116.59 angle. So now that we know that, then the remain side is given by C sine C equals A sine over uh, angle A, law of sines. Um, then we plug in for uh, C here. We need to find this length here for C. C would equal A over sine A sine C. Multiply each side by C to uh, <clears throat> better by sine C. Multiply each side by sine C. That goes away. Ends up over here. And then we plug in and we crank out. And we get C equals 29.40 for this side here. Okay, let's try one. Uh, <clears throat> use the law of sines to solve the triangle. We have a triangle of A equals 110, A equals 125, and side B equals 100. 
so for this situation here, we're given this, and then we're going to use sine b. Uh, um, sine b would equal b sine a over a equals 100 sine 110. 100 sine 110 over 125 would be the, <clears throat> the length of uh, uh, side a. That comes out to this number here. And that is our, <clears throat> uh, our number that we get. Then we use the inverse uh, button on our calculator. And we come out to 48.74 degrees for <clears throat> the angle measure for B. Then once we have that, we can figure out that C is 21.26. And then we plug in. We need to find the length now of C. We don't have the length of C. So we use A and sine A, since we have that up here. Multiply by sine C, <clears throat> and we have 125. Multiply by sine 21.26, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, over sine 110. And that comes up 48.23 for the length of side C. And then down here, you know what, students, I was going to give this to you, but I'm gonna let this. I'm gonna let you do this. So do that on your own, students. It'll be. Um, the video will be on YouTube if you want to. If you want to get your solutions, or wait for your solution PowerPoint for your solutions on that. Oh, I gave that to you anyway. Okay. And that is. Um, that is your 6.1 part one. <clears throat> okay. Uh, thank you very much.